Let's take a moment to look at how to find the empirical formula of a compound given some sort of mass data. Um, before we start, let's just review what pieces of information an empirical formula tells us. So if we see something like H2O, the formula of water, um, it tells us two things. On a really, really small level, on a microscopic level of things we can't see, it tells me that one molecule of H2O contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. On a larger scale, um, on a more macroscopic scale of something that we might be able to actually see, it also tells me a mole ratio. So it tells me for every one mole of water, there's two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms. It's allowing us to scale up essentially by a factor of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, it does not tell us that for every two grams of hydrogen, there's one gram of oxygen, okay? We can figure out mass data um, in a different kind of way using these subscripts, but the subscripts only tell us atom ratios or mole ratios. So if we're dealing with problems where we have to get an empirical formula, the lesson is when in doubt, we're gonna have to mole it out. We want to get into moles because that's what's going to give us these subscripts that are needed in our empirical formula. Okay, so let's look at an example. So it tells us in this problem the mass percents of each element that are in this formula, but it does not tell us what the formula is. This is a very common type of problem. It tells us there's 36.5% sodium, 25.4% sulfur, and 38.1% oxygen. So the first thing is, if they give you mass percents, assume you have a 100 gram sample. So essentially, all the mass percents just turn into masses. Instead of 36.5% sodium, since I'm assuming I have a 100 gram sample, I have 36.5 grams of sodium, 25.4 grams of sulfur, 38.1 grams of oxygen. It just makes my problem easier to assume 100. You could assume any amount and then figure out the masses of each, but by assuming 100, I don't have to change any of these numbers in any kind of way. Now, when in doubt, what are we going to do? When in doubt, we mole it out. We can't use masses to figure out these subscripts because the subscripts did not tell us mass ratios, but we can change these numbers into moles and that will give us our subscripts. So our next step is to convert each mass to moles. And I'm going to do so by looking up each element's atomic mass or molar mass in my periodic table and separately converting each of these masses to moles. So sodium has a molar mass of about 23 grams per mole. I want grams on the bottom so that it cancels out with the grams of sodium, and I want moles on top, so that's what I'm left with. Okay, sulfur has a molar mass of 32.1. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16. Notice that the masses are always on the bottom. Notice that even though oxygen is a diatomic element when it's by itself, right now it's in a compound. So I am, don't know how many oxygens I have right now. Um, I'm using si 16 grams of oxygen because right now we're just dealing with oxygen by itself, not as a diatomic element. And I get 1.59 moles of sodium, 0.79, uh, 0.791 moles of sulfur, and 2.38 moles of oxygen. Okay. You know, make sure that you're keeping enough significant figures here. If you round and cut off your numbers too early, you're not going to end up getting nice whole numbers when we get to the end of our process. Okay, so essentially, um, these numbers are our subscripts. They're, if I'm looking at, the, these are representing our ratios. For every 1.59 moles of sodium, I get 0.791 moles of sulfur, and I have 2.38 moles of oxygen. But do we like looking at a formula like this? No, we need whole number ratios. So now it's just a matter of tweaking and working with these numbers to get them into whole numbers. And the best way to usually do that, and it's not always the case, but in most problems, the best way to do this is to divide by the smallest value. Why? Because if we take a number and divide it by itself, what are we going to get? 
We know we're going to get 1, and that's a whole number. And let's see what we get for the other numbers if we do that. Okay, so I'm going to take each of these numbers and divide by the smallest, which happens to be 0.791. Why the smallest? Because we would want the smallest to be 1. Okay, and if I do this, in this case, all the numbers work out to be nicely. 1.59 divided by 0.791, uh, 0.791 is 2. So I get 2, I get 1, I get 3. Now if you were to divide and you were to get something like 1.999, round that to 2. If you were to get something like 2.01, round that to 2. Okay. Um, now, sometimes, though, you won't get super close to whole numbers. For instance, what if I got 2.5, 1, and 3? Okay, well, my numbers just need a little more manipulating. I would just multiply all my numbers by 2. Okay, so you still might need a little bit of manipulation. You have your ratios, though. It's just getting them into whole numbers at this point. Okay, if, for instance, I got 0.3 and 0.4, as my numbers. Oh, just make it 3 and 4 and, and I'm done. It would be something 3, something 4. So it does, every problem is slightly different, um, but it does seem to help to divide by the smallest first and then see if there's anything else you can do. Okay, take a moment if you haven't done so. Um, try this one. Pause the video and try it. I'm going to go through it really quickly. Okay, so assume a 100 gram sample just so we can turn those masses right into, uh, those percents right into masses. I'm going to now mole it out. Okay, look up the molar masses of each, convert each into moles. Make sure you keep enough significant figures. Now I'm just going to divide by the smallest, and I get MnO2. Perfect. Here's one more to try. Notice in this one, rather than giving you percent by mass, I just go ahead and give you masses. So there's nothing to assume. Just take those masses and mole it out. When in doubt, mole it out. So I just skip that assuming step. Okay, same thing. I take each element, look up the molar mass, convert from grams into moles. Make sure you keep enough significant figures. These leading zeros don't count. Okay, divide by the smallest. In this case, I get CEI3. Don't forget that sometimes in a problem, they might, especially if there's, let's say, only two elements in your formula, they might just give you the percent of one element. Well, what should all my percents add up to? They'll add up to 100. So you can always figure out that last missing percent by subtracting from 100. So, for example, in this case, it tells me 69.94% iron. Um, okay, that must mean that oxygen is the difference between that and 100, 30.06. Assume 100%. Take those grams. Change them into moles. Keep enough sig figs. Even if you keep more than you need to start with, that's cool. Rather keep more than less. Okay, divide by the smallest. Oh, look, in this case, I get 1 and 1.5. What should I do? Let's multiply them by 2, and I get Fe2O3. Okay, 